bringing you 18 Fridays, Axe the Axe, anything meaningful Friday. Today we're talking about how to scout for off-market listings and use that as part of your UVP. That's like a second part I added. We've talked about how to find off-market listings, right? But then it's like in a world where we need to keep re-identifying what we do for our clients. What is our unique value? Now, if you're working with buyers exclusively, because you may have to or get something in writing, it's important that you have to bring many things to the table. And I think if there was only one thing, this could be it. This could be it. So pay attention. Today, I'm going to give you a bunch of tools. I'm going to start with, um, let me fix my mic. I don't like when it's like that. Start with your database. Um, and we got a good question right off the bat from Miles from EXP Realty, talking about uh, foreclosure and pre-foreclosure properties. That's excellent. We can help you find that as well. That's kind of easy, uh, depending on your market. So Miles, just comment where, you, where you're from and, and what is the tax record system that your local MLS uses? Is it realist or is it something different? Uh, but if you all stay to the end, I'm going to give you access free to my AI chatbot, number one. And two, I will give you a ebook from RPR on how to prospect using RPR and find those off market, those pre foreclosures, those foreclosure properties, uh, depending on where you are in the country and if you are in a disclosure state. Okay, but I think to start, we're going to start with your database. Because I understand if I sat here and I said, hey, you know what you need to do? You need, you need to talk to strangers. And you're going to be like, oh, my God, I can't talk to strangers. Or like, uh, yeah, well, if it makes a difference of you finding a home for your buyer, sometimes you get a little, a little bit uncomfortable. You know, if it means finding someone the home of their dreams, the answer should always be yes, right? We're going to do uh, more than the average agent. We're going to go above and beyond. We're going to provide unreasonable hospitality to our clients and say, look it, uh, I'm willing to talk to strangers. But some of you still won't. And so let's start with your database and I'm, I'm gonna give you I'm AI infused. Everything I talk about has some AI to it. So what I wanna start with is called Revaluate. Revaluate, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a little bit of a presentation to give you guys some, some of the knowledge that I'm talking about. But here, we're gonna go like this. Move myself over just a little bit. Just a little bit because we're streaming live right now on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. So if you're watching this on Facebook and you're wondering about the visuals behind me, it's a widescreen landscape if you're on Facebook. So it's facebook.com slash jmanspeaks. Might give you a better experience, but I'm not one to tell you where to go. Okay. All right. So finding sellers. Uh, so often we, we do look to cold call because uh, maybe you have a block in talking to your clients. I don't know what it is, but at least if you had some predictive analytics that could tell you, hey, within my database, these people are more likely to sell. Let's say you have 100 people, 200, 500, 1,000, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's a percentage. We're going to go over that in a second, but there's a percentage of those folks that are more likely to sell. So it should be an easier call. Easier call, email, text, whatever, however you want to do it. Okay, but I'm going to give you the campaign to create as well. Okay, so reevaluate discovering likely movers. How they do that is your network's large. I'll let you In watch your this. network, you have friends, email connections, leads, and contacts. Did you know that about 11% of your network will move this year? 11%? That's so many movers. But how do you find them? Revaluate can help you find who's most likely to move in your network. Using new predictive analytics, Revaluate looks for the data Ds that cause people to move. The data Ds. Okay, we'll go over that in a second what the, the, the data Ds are. Uh, but 11%. So let's just call it, we'll lower it to 10. One out of 10 people in your database are more likely to sell. So if you have 100 people, that's 10. If you have 1,000 people, that's 100. But let's just say, uh, I want you to focus on quality over quantity. What this service actually does as we dive deeper is you'll upload your database in there and they actually monitor it every single day. They monitor it for these data Ds 
you know, they're monitoring it on many different data points. You have, you know, what are your clients' spending habits? What are they searching? What are they doing on on um, on social media? Uh, search history, right? Spending habits, and, and and a bunch of other things. Their profiles and such. You know, what are their demographics? What what generation are they? And all of these things are compiled together in a in an algorithm that says, hey. You were searching for moving boxes. You called a home improvement company. You went to Facebook and posted about this, you know, and you're wondering where do they get the data? It's in your terms of service, right? You, with your credit card company, you signed it. Everybody, every time you see terms of service, that's like 16 pages long and you just accept it because you don't have the time to read it. Basically, what you're saying is I authorize you, company, to sell my data to everybody, right? Everybody's worried about TikTok. Look at everybody's doing it. Facebook's doing it, your credit card company's doing it, Google's been doing it, all of the things, okay? So the data Ds, and here's what they are. Diapers, diamonds, divorce, death, divorce, diplomas, downsizing, discretionary income, the daily grind, and of course, dumpsters. Nobody ever thinks about dumpsters, but if you think about, you see that rollout in your neighborhood, Roll out. You see that rollout sitting in a driveway. What's happening? There's a property getting rehab. They're getting rid of stuff. They're they're downside. Whatever it is, they're getting rid of stuff, and that that will lead to a listing. The daily grind is their job. Obviously, discretionary income is how they're spending their money. You should know. You know somebody diplomas meaning somebody graduates. What happens? They they need to get a better job and probably buy something. Or if the kids are going off to school. Right, that means that there's an emptier house. If people are getting divorced, you understand that. Death, you understand that. Diamonds, somebody gets, somebody's getting engaged. That's two two people coming together. Typically, they have to sell something if they have stuff, or they're going to buy a house together. Right, and then diapers, obviously, baby in a baby carriage, sucking his thumb, peeing his pants, and they need a bigger house. All these things within your database are happening every single day. Okay, every single day. Hey, we got Brian Anthony. What's up, man? We got Roster New York in the house. We got a lot of folks on from all over. So this is going to be different depending on where you are. But here's what it looks like. Now, like I said, social search, spend, government data, uh, census data, things like that. They're pulling all these data points. And what they do on a daily basis, daily basis, is once you upload your database to it, they'll tell you the quality of your database and they'll actually scrub it for you. Meaning like you have bad data in there. You have people that you have old email addresses, people that don't respond, people that you should be just deleted from your database because you pulled their email from Facebook and didn't really ask them or it's an old email or, or whatever. Okay. So the first part of it is they'll sift through it and make it better. And this might be a good time for you you know, add your recent sales to your database, people that you may have met, you know, hopefully you've grown your network as you've been in real estate. Maybe you've been so busy in the last year, you haven't done anything with your database. So now's the time to kind of like update it, delete some people as you upload it, but they'll also help you. Okay. Now, as you can see right over here, what happens then is they'll rank your people, your people from zero to a hundred. And 80 to 100 means they're likely to sell. Okay, it's not a guarantee. Um, and, and that's why with anything, my lighting is off. I get distracted by the easiest things. Um, likely to sell. It's not a guarantee, but it, it's much better than like, hey, you have an entire database that you haven't marketed to or you've been trying to. And you're using the shotgun approach, right? You're like, I'm going to spray and pray. Everybody's getting everything. Well, guess what? Now it's a more targeted approach because you say, okay, out of the 100 people, quality people that I have in my database, let me focus on these 10 with some seller-based content. And we're gonna, I'm going to give you a, a prompt to use for AI today, but some seller-based content that attracts them, right? It's almost like, you're sitting there with a crystal ball and you're like, oh, are you thinking about selling? Here's what I'm willing to do. For and they're like, yes, yes, I am. Oh, tell me more, Jeremiah. Right? So that's a guy think about it. Uh, the rank is every day. And so as you see this, then it's like, okay, let me add. These are imaginary people, so please don't just 
don't try to call these people if they're likely to sell you folks, right? Uh, Mike Swisher. Oh, Mike Swisher. Okay, I'm going to export him. And anybody that's 80 to 100, I'm going to export them. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what. If you have a CRM that you're using and that you and you like, fine, use it. I like Wise Agent uh, myself. If you go to crm.jmanseminars.com, you get a free trial, a free 30-day trial to try it out. But whatever CRM you're using, so you would export them, and then in your CRM you would tag them. Okay, tag, which means identify them. Uh, every CRM has like a different term that they use. Classify them, sort them, label them. Okay, could be any any number of those things. You would tag them as likely mover. Okay, because then we're going to add them to a campaign. Okay, add them to a campaign. And I'm I'm talking, but if you had, if you have questions as I as I'm talking, just uh, put them in the comments. Uh, hey, Monica's in Boca, headed to New York City. Okay, you're going the wrong way. No, kidding. Okay, so the next phase of that, as I discover, right? Because this is your next question. Revaluate actually did. They did a, a independent third party. Right, because I, I'm not a believer just like you. I'm like, whatever, how do I know they're likely to sell? And you're like, I don't want to do anything till I know for sure. Meanwhile, you're just sitting here doing nothing. Not an option. Okay, but 19.5% accuracy. Uh, third party validated, meaning everybody that was ranked 80 to 100 within six months' time, those one out of five, 19.5%, one out of five of those people listed in the MLS, okay? And that excludes uh, San Francisco and New York City because they don't have the data because New York City market is not a, a realtor market. But I would like to say it's similar, okay? One out of five, which means uh, if 11%, one out, of, one out of 10 people is likely to sell uh, in your database, then one out of those five uh, are gonna list. If I knew that one out of five people that I was going to contact will list today, would I stay in contact? Absolutely, right? Some of you are calling two, 300, 500 people a day if you're cold calling to get these kind of results. And you're ignoring these people that know you're successful, that like you, that already have a rapport. And they're like, yo, where you been? Oh, busy talking to strangers, getting hung up on. When you could easily have a great conversation with somebody that knows, likes, and trusts you. Okay, now uh, here's just an example of uh, a text message that I sent to a client one time. Uh, you know, and I was testing some things out. I said, "Oh, good morning, Wendy. I hope all is well." My crystal ball tells me that you might need a real estate agent, that you might need a real estate superhero, and that's part of our our tagline is your real estate superhero. Is that right? Um, she said, "Not yet." Casey and Chris will be staying in a campground for a couple of months and then hopefully buying. So. She was actually a 95 in, in the system because she's a millennial parent, okay? She's a millennial parent that does searches for her, for her uh, children, okay? But you see on the left is, is kind of like the update you get within the platform online. And then on the right, because I'm not going to be on my computer all the time with Revaluate open, you could also elect to get a text message with who within your database is likely to sell, okay? Everybody with me so far? Any questions on that, put it in the comments or in the chat because that's just the first step. And in the past, I've, I've gone like this, boom, 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 and gone through all the, all the ways for you to find off-market listings, but I don't wanna do that because I need to help you with the conversion process. I think getting the leads is easier, converting them is, is what we struggle with sometimes. And so I'm going to switch screens one more time. Let's see. We're going to go back over here. Do, 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 do. Uh, where are we? We go here. Okay. So here's what I did. Just to show you, show you what, um, can you see that? On Instagram, more or less what I said is creating, create, creating. I should have said create. Create an eight by eight. Can oh no, no, sorry. That's what GBT said. Create an eight by eight campaign, which means eight touches over eight weeks. Now you could make this create an eight 
email campaign if you're only, only going to uh, try to contact somebody via email. Now, I don't think that's the best strategy because not everybody checks their email, right? You had to have multiple ways of communicating. Uh, and I would say email, door knock, postcard, text message, Facebook message, video, right? All, all these different ways. Um, no, so Jody has a question here. When I, when I said cold calling, I meant, yeah, calling strangers. Uh, calling your database is more of a warm call, right? Calling your database is more of a warm call because they know you. They're like, hey, Jody Meyer, oh my gosh, how are you? Nice to talk to you. Right? When you, when you have, you can buy lists, you can go, and, you know, there's, and I'll, I'll give you some sources on where to get leads. And then you're calling people that are complete strangers. They don't know who you are. They may know of your company, but they don't know who you are. Okay? Good question, though, Jody. Still against the rules. Um, to call strangers, yeah, unless you're inquiring. If it's a FISBO and you're inquiring about their property, you might have a potential buyer. Uh, or door knocking is not considered cold calling. So door knocking is still uh, okay. It's a gray area in New York State. For those who don't know, if you're in New York State, we're in a state of emergency all the time, I guess. Uh, and during a state of emergency, we cannot cold call. Okay? This is perfect. So creating an eight by eight campaign, eight touches over eight weeks. And I made, I made it very specific to market to people in my database. These people have been identified as likely sellers by a platform called Revaluate that uses predictive analytics to tell me who is more likely to sell in my database. To recap, they know me and I may or may not have talked to them recently. This applies to all of you, okay? And I didn't realize that my head looked funny there. So let me fix this, make it smaller, Weep. and then bring it back over here, and then move myself in the middle. No, it didn't tell me. Okay. Now, uh, you see, this is the campaign. So week one, introduction. Day one, personalized email. And it's going to give you a great outline. Now, you don't have to create it from there. I'm going to say, okay, write the personalized email in my brand voice, right? I'm going to say write number one, personalized email in my brand voice. Do, 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 do. I'm singing, <laughs> I'm singing tequila. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And so look at this. Move this over just a little so you can see this a little better. Okay, so it wrote the whole the first email for me. Um, hello, recipient's first name. I hope this message finds you well and enjoying a wonderful day. I've been thinking about you recently, especially with all the exciting changes happening in our local real estate market. I'm reaching out because with my handy tools and a bit of market insight, your home popped up as one that might be ready for a new chapter. Whether you're just curious about your home's current value or seriously considering a move, I'm here to help you guide you through the options with no pressure. What's the market allow? Now we're seeing some fantastic opportunities for sellers with home selling quickly at great prices. Curious about what your home might be worth in today's market? I'd love to provide you with a free, no obligation, market analysis, personalized just for you. Let's set up a time to chat. How did your schedule look this week? Quick conversation. Okay. Could you all do that? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Thanks, Stregla. Stregla? Um, Stre I know that's not your name, but that's your, your handle. And so that's that's just first touch, right? So we send this email. And this is what I talk about. You can create this as a campaign in your CRM. So this is the first email of the campaign, meaning when you add somebody to it, it's an automated process now. Because once we have systems in place, what, what happens? They get done. Because if you left it up to you, and me, I'm the same way, right? What happens? I sent this first email, I'm hyped. And the next week I get busy and I forget to send the email. And then it's like, oh shoot, am I in second or third week? And then I send that out and there's no, there's no discipline. There's no consistency, okay? And the point is you have to get eight touches over eight weeks in different ways. Now, let me scroll back up to show you what's our, what's our next step in the process, okay? 
Day two, market insight. A short video from you discussing recent sales in their area and what makes now a great time to sell. Now, it could be, I might pick just a few examples, right? You could personalize this. Just make it a two to three minute video. It doesn't have to be super long, right? The point is that you're, it's a personalized video. Remember, now that we have a more targeted approach, you're not doing a thousand videos. It's as simple as like going into Zoom. You know how to go into Zoom, right? Make a recording in there if you're comfortable with that. And then you could share your screen and have that behind you and say, oh, this property, I actually showed it. It was really nice. They blew out the back wall, right? And then you're kind of explaining how you're a market expert. And then you're, you're showing them some examples like this property had 43 offers. I think it's, you know, it's in that pricing. When you look at the sold prices, that's not the, that's not the price you want to market at uh, or list at in our area. You want to list probably 23% lower than that because that's what properties are selling for on average, list price to sale price ratio. Am I demonstrating knowledge? You betcha. You betcha. You betcha, Bobby. Okay, so market two is, is video message. Now I'm going to come in here. Which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah. Uh, there's actually, a, it's called a GPT within, chat GPT if you have it. Um, what, Alana, what do you want to get a copy of? Just put it, put it in the comments for me. Uh, and what will happen is you'll need a comment after the fact because your comments are lost during a live video. Send me a direct message saying, send me a copy of the campaign. I guess that would be it. Um, but I'm going to give you access to a lot of things if you, if you stay to the end. Okay. Now, there's a GPT within Chat GPT, which means you, you're going to go in here. And you're going to hit Explore GPTs on the left hand side on Chat GPT. There's one called Viral Every Time. Okay, this helps you create viral hooks for videos. So look at these: ten compelling hook ideas for your video on the real estate market and selling homes. Okay, why your neighbor? I would say why your neighbor just sold his house in just three days, and how you can too. I'm diving into local real estate markets, recent sales, and what I found is shocking. Dun, 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 totin. Okay, um, last line. Turns out timing is everything. Let's find out who's now, why now is your golden moment. Okay, other elements, high energy walkthrough of neighborhood, quick stat, pop-ups, homeowner interviews. Number two, these are, there's 10 options here for you. Number two, everyone's selling their homes, but here's why now is the best time for you. I'm about to reveal the three secrets that made recent home sales in your area skyrocket. Pew! And the third secret is a game changer for sellers right now. Dramatic music, quick cuts between happy sellers, graphical market trends. Okay. Think it's a bad time to sell your home? Think again. This is one thing making houses fly off the market in our area. Do you know what it is? <laughs> sell your house now? See why waiting even a month could cost you thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Depending on your average price point, because that's very true. Home prices are soaring in our area. He's like, right, so okay, get the idea. That was viral every time GPT. But you could, if you just have regular GPT or regular AI, you could say, write me viral hooks um, and include these four things, I guess. The hook, foreshadowing, last line, and any other elements. Here, let's work backwards. Create a prompt. Write a prompt. To create viral hook ideas using GPT or other AI. Let's see if that works. Reverse engineering. Shoot, I won't put this in the chat for you all. Just keep on keeping on. This is damn good. This is unbelievable. How am I going to copy this? It's going to be too long for me to copy, but. OK. 
copy markdown. Okay. Let's see if this will work. I doubt it, but I'm going to put a Google, a Google doc together by the end. I was going to say too long, Jeremiah. Yeah, it's too long to put in this comment, but I'll put that in for you because it's important. It's important. Okay. Now, where do we want to go next? Our next, uh, our next piece, right? So that was week two, week three value proposition, send a personalized mini market analysis showing home sales and listings in the area. Okay. Can you write the email to send my mini market analysis week three above it's gonna write the email again okay and I'll keep in mind once you do this if you do number two like customize for their neighborhood I guess you could do just the whole market you service so if like uh, I live in the city of Rochester if I did if I picked like three good good comps that I wanted to give as examples, I suppose I could send that to my entire database and then I only have to make the video once. So we're creating the campaign. We create write the one email, that's week one. We, we create the second email to go out seven days later, right? Because it goes, once you add somebody to this, they get the first email the first day and you set the days really. First email, first day, second email, uh, seven days, third email, 14, 21, 28, right? Get the idea, 35, 42. 49, 56 days. Okay, so this one. I hope you're having a great week. As we touched base earlier about the potential of selling your home, I put together a mini market analysis to give you a clearer picture of what's hoping, what's happening, what's hoping around your neighborhood. Here's a snapshot of your customized mini market analysis. Sweet, right? Okay. Number four, where are we at? Number four, testimonial sharing. Now, share a story. This is important. A story. Please don't go, I just sold something. Ooh, I'm so great. Share the freaking story because people will remember that, right? What about that first time home buyer that you helped them achieve the American dream of home ownership? You changed their life. Share that story, right? Somebody that had bad credit and didn't think they would buy a home, but you helped them, right? Somebody who uh, was facing foreclosure and you help them sell their home and uh, not get foreclosed on and do a short sale, right? Share the stories, right? Share the stories because people remember them. Stories sell, facts tell, right? Don't be like, oh, you know, statistics show us. Nobody cares about statistics. 93.7% are made up on the spot, right? When you start talking like that. All right, so um, right Write the email for week week four. Create a story of a first time home buyer as an example. First time home seller, home seller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home seller, because we're looking for sellers, right? I'm not saying that you do this. I'm just giving this to you as an example, okay? And you could like do a rough draft. Here's the story of a seller that I worked for recently. Help me to craft it and make it better, okay? Story-based email for week four. Meet Jane. A first time seller success story. Hope this email finds you smiling. This week I wanted to share something special. Story about Jane. First time, it's like a rap. Sarah, story about Jane, a first time home seller who was once in your shoes, feeling uncertain about, excited about the possibilities. Okay, just a few months ago, Jane decided it was her it's time to sell her cherished first home. Okay, why am I sharing this? Because I believe you can have a similar success story. Let's talk about your home selling journey. Remember, every home selling journey is unique, but the goal is always the same to make it as smooth and as successful as possible. Shall I keep going? Okay. We're cruising right along. It's taking up more time than I thought it would. <laughs> I got more stuff, but we may not get to it till next week. Okay. Uh, week four, testimonial. Okay. Week five, direct engagement. Okay. 
create the copy for the postcard. that we are sending on week five above. Also give me image ideas for the postcard and anything else you think I might need to make it emotionally engaging and sensational. All this just comes from my head, you know. It's a lot of things in there. It's a scary place. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're all so quiet today. Is it because you're engaged? Here's a story of a man named Brady. Man, have you guys seen the Brady Brady Roast? I'm a Bills fan. I thought it was fantastic. Don't watch it with the kids, though. Okay, it's rated NR17, I would say. Whatever the highest rating should be. Okay, so up front, image idea. A bright, welcoming image of a home with an inviting front porch, adorned with colorful flowers and a sold sign. Okay. With a text overlay, dreams delivered. You know what I would do then? I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna go to Dolly. Oh, Dolly. Craft an image. Watercolor. Oh, shoot. What happened? I hit return. I don't know what happened there. Um, craft an image. I don't know how to spell it anymore. Okay. Um, watercolor painting. Let's let that cook. We'll come back to it in just a bit. Just a bit, my friend. Okay. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. We're still here. Okay. So we have that. The front side, back side heading is the time to make the move. So this is just a postcard. Postcards have a better open rate because they don't have to be opened. Get it? The letter, you got to go. And if it looks like a bill and they don't know and they're like, front, front. Most people open up right over their recycling bin. If they're not sure, when in doubt, I throw it away. Okay. At least here with a postcard, they see the visual, they see your face. That's an impression. Even if they get to see it just before it gets thrown away. Okay. Let me go body copy. Hello. Thank you for sending your home. You're not alone. Many are discovering. Okay. Now that was week five. What's next, folks? Week six educational content oh create a guide on selling your first home create a guide on selling your first home so that we can send it out week six yeah i could do that too and maybe you have a like a seller's guide or something at your office that's great so that's when you send it just make it a digital it's going to be a digital copy mm -hmm. oh don't tell me what's happening my friend okay hold on gotta refresh that give it just a moment we're gonna come back here and look at oh look at there's our postcard see how i made it watercolor style it's so pretty that's a nice little craftsman style home oh i would open that you know you would too Okay. Uh, so what was I doing? Oh, create a seller's guide. I had an error there. Create a seller's first time home seller's guide. I want to be specific with the type of seller. If it's an empty nester, I'll make it an empty nester. If 
first time home sellers guide to send out week six. Do, 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 do. Oh, come on. You're messing with me now. Keep doing this. See, if I have multiple tabs open, sometimes GPT will do this. Create a seller's guide to send out week six. You're, you're experiencing my different stages of frustration. A first time. Does it again, I'm gonna lose my stuff. Okay, I'm copying it just in case it does it again. Okay, do it. Make me a guide, clown. Make me a bicycle clown. Name that movie. You win a prize. Okay. Perfect. Look, it's making the guide. Now I could take this outline and then go to like uh, Canva and then use the AI presentation creator and probably create a guide in there. That's what I would do. We don't have the time though. Let that go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, it's laid it all out. Hold on, I have one. Look at my lovely guide. You see how quickly I did it? This one's for a buyer actually, but I have one for selling your home, finding your new home. And it has all this lovely information in here. Do, 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 and then in the back, hi, hi. Okay. I really do what I say I'm going to do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's called integrity, folks. Okay. Six. Now, seven. We're almost done. Where is it? What do we say? Okay. What was week seven? This thing is messing with me when I, when I refreshed it. Okay. Week seven. What was week seven? Oh, by the way, GPT has memory now. It'll remember from one conversation to another. Make sure that you have it turned on in your settings. Oh, okay. Week seven is just a follow-up email. And then what was week eight? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Invitation to a webinar or personal consultation. Close, okay? This is like fantastic because now you all been on a Zoom. You create a nice presentation or, you know, a listing presentation, I guess, is a presentation. Uh, but depending, that's targeted towards that specific type of seller, okay? I guess we'll have to do another live stream about how to, how to hold a webinar but not today. So what questions do you have in the chat? Um, we get tons of return postcards. How do we remedy this? Hmm, Natalie, uh, can you comment again? What, when you say postcards returned, why are they returned? It, it has to be bad, a bad address. If you're sending them to your database, you should know, should be the right address. If you're, and this could be, you know, if your postcard, if you're sending postcards to like an area, that's part of the problem. Like if you just say, okay, I want to target this, this neighborhood and you send it to everybody, there's some bad addresses in there and, and things are going to come back. There's vacant houses, there's people that have moved. So it's inaccurate data. Uh, we started with, depending if, if you came in late, uh, these are people in your database. So it should be good. Yeah, bad, yeah, bad mail. Exactly like, like Stregler said. Um, but smart zip, to that point, smart, S-M-A-R-T, zip, Z-I-P, dot com. They use the same predictive analytics, not for your database, but if you want to, if you're farming like an area, instead of farming the entire area, uh, it'll dramatically improve your results because it'll send it to people that are more likely to sell, but then also uh, people that they, they're guaranteed addresses. 
So you can increase the frequency and, and not have to spray the entire area, right? If you have a budget. Okay, so um, thank you, Strike Bad Mail. Question, where would you get your home listing and buyer books made? Uh, well, Sweezy, you, you could get them made in-house at Douglas Salomon, but um, here, I'll show you. One more, you ready for another field trip? Here we go. You'll never guess where I'm going. Canva.com. Canva.com. Because they actually have an option, and this is great for maybe some of you aren't with bigger companies, and um, they you don't have an in-house printer that'll do it for you, or maybe you just don't want to wait because you're impatient because you're a real estate agent. I understand, right? And so, hold on a second. Go to my projects. In my projects. Okay. Um, so here's this listed to sold comprehensive home seller guide. Okay. Now, if you see this, just move it over just a teensy bit. Okay. Now, there's actually an option. I don't want to share it. Hold on. This was yesterday when I opened it up and I went edit, I think. Okay, see this? So I opened it up and this is just a PDF. Okay. And right here, quality flyers delivered to your doorstep. They have an option for me. So let's say if I wanted to print this, it would be $38 because it's 28 pages. It's a dollar something. But yeah, I mean, I'd be willing to try it once to see what the quality of it, right? Because if I want to get really nice listings, it all starts with every phase of it. I'm not going to, I don't want to print on my home printer and then staple it together because that gives me an impression as a seller that like you're cheap, <laughs> right? You want everything. If you want to be a luxury agent, then it's like, Everything that you provide to them has to be of high quality. If you've ever received one of my business cards, you understand, like I have a plastic business card that's like a credit card because I want people to go, wow, I've never gotten anything like this. And it's like, okay, well, there you go. Okay. So where do they print it through? Let's see. Um, put a modern twist, happiness guarantee. I'm going to continue and see what happens just to see what the company is. Look, they, they fix the edges for printing, automatically fix two issues that avoid common printing issues, do a final check, download PDF. So I don't even know the company, but it's I'm sure somebody that, that Canva refers to. Okay. So that kind of brings us uh, to the, not almost to the end, but here, let me go back over here. I'm going to go back to the single overlay so you see me just full screen. Now, what was the name of the first app you were telling about? telling us about how much does it cost. So reevaluate. I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, it's, and it's not an app, it's a program. So I'm going to share my referral codes. Use this because I get some kind of credit. I don't know what happens. <laughs> but there it is. I put it in, in the comments on Facebook, on Instagram. Once this is reposted, uh, I will, I'll put it in the comments as well or send me a DM, a DM on Instagram, or check us out on Facebook, okay? So it's reevaluate. Now, if you don't have access to GPT or you don't wanna pay for the full version, I'm gonna give you free access to my AI chatbot that we created. And everything that, that I've shown you today could be done with this chatbot, okay? So it's going to be HTTP, it's jmanbot.com, but let me just make sure it works for you. Dot jmanbot.com. Any other questions while we wait for me to type things? The goal is HTTP jman to get, you know, you get the leads from your database, but this started in the very beginning and working on your UVP and saying, you know what I you know what I can do is help you find off-market opportunities for sellers that want to sell. 
that can start with my database or tune in next week where we're going to do part two of this. Okay. Part two will be talking to strangers <laughs> and finding it because I got a bunch more tools uh, for that. So let me just make sure this works. Copy, paste. You can go to jmanbot.com. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Here, I put it in the chat. Because I realized, even though with my customized GPT that I made, some of you aren't paying 20 bucks a month for GPT. So let me make it easy for you. There you go. Oh, a seminar and hosting a first seminar. Natalie, you got it. Um, we'll do that. See, thank you. If you have any other ideas of seminars, you know, live streams that you want me to do, seminars on seminars, I already have that. We could do that. Maybe that'll be a special Zoom invite and you can just register for it. Um, and then we're going to do next week too. Okay. Woohoo. Thanks, Natalie. I like your excitement. Please come back again. Uh, what market are you in, did you say? I think you said Houston. Somebody said Houston. All right. Any other questions? Is Instagram still going? Yeah, Instagram's still going. All right. Well, you can hit me up on Facebook Messenger or Instagram DM if you have additional questions, you want some follow-up information in regards to what we discussed today. But the goal is, number one, provide more value for your buyers. Be smarter in talking to your database so you know who to focus on first and to who to target. Um, and keep in mind that it's not a one call, you, you know, sell or don't sell. It's a campaign, okay? Everything that we've discussed all eight weeks, once you develop that in your CRM, all you have to do then when somebody is likely to sell is you put them, you tag them as somebody that's likely to sell and the campaign starts. So they get first email, then seven days, then 14, then 21, then 28 then 35, then 42, then 49, then 56. Okay, so it's almost a two-month campaign. They're he they hear from you in different ways. And I think I would even add in there some uh, social media and text messaging at some point. I think that's the only thing I would do to make that prompt better that I just shared with you. But that's it. Oh, Manhattan and Long Island. Okay, perfect. You got it. All right, folks. Jeremiah's J. Man Monero with J. Man Speaks. Make it a great day, and thanks for spending a whole hour with me. I really appreciate it. Share this with somebody if you found some value. Make it a great day.